Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. My name is Jordan. I'm Millennial Investor and if you haven't seen me before, I like to disclose everything that I'm watching in the stock market and every company that I'm investing in, including the three that I'm invested in right now, which is Crocs, Salesforce, and Amazon. But one thing I also like to do is look into companies that I find interesting, including ones I don't own, which is what we're going over today, which is APPH stock, or otherwise known as App Harvest Incorporated stock. This company is one that I've been tracking for about two years. It's not one that I'm planning on investing in, and this is an extremely risky company. So do your own research, invest at your own risk. This is not one that I'm going to be buying in 2022, period. Not even close. But it's a company that I really like. And the reason is, is, well, we're going to be going over in this video. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about lots of different things like financial metrics, the growth of the company, the outlook for where they want to move the business going forward. Talk about some of the technology that they're investing in, including the robotics company that they bought out. So stay tuned. We're going to give a quick brief overview of this company. I haven't looked into it in a long time. So stay tuned into this. If you haven't checked me out before, my name is Jordan. I'm Lineal Investor. These portfolios that I share and update every single week, every single month are shared down below in the description. So check that out. And 125 people have got signed up using M1 Finance so far. And then this is my portfolio balance as of the time of filming, which is about $42,000. And then this is my performance since joining this brokerage. So thank you guys for tuning in. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now let's look at App Harvest stock price. If we look over the last couple of years since they went public via SPAC at $10 a share, they skyrocketed. And at one point, they hit about $40 a share. So it's just straight up. Now today, they are significantly lower. The fact that this hit $40 a share is just mind boggling. Someone should have been shorting it, okay? Now, this company today trades at $2.74, which is dramatically lower. And this is a little bitty baby market cap company at about $0.3 billion. Now, this company is also doing hardly any revenue, and they're just getting started. They are a brand new. When they went public via SPAC, which was around, let's go back to that date. When they went via SPAC, it was late 2020, and now two years later, they're just starting to get some revenues coming in, and that's because they're currently building out their business. Now, speaking of which, before we go any further, we start talking about their facilities, let's talk about what these facilities actually do. Now the two little bullet points I want to focus on here are these two. Traditionally, these facilities take 90% less water than the conventional agriculture, only 10% of the water is used of a traditional farming method, and then of the yield that they get on those crops are approximately 30x. So they'll get 30 times the crops using 10% less of the water, which is absolutely crazy. These are extremely efficient, are very green, and then the lighting is also very efficient, as well as lots of things like the employees and the robotics that they, they use, and we'll be talking about more than that in a second. Now, all these little highlights are great. Now let's talk about the actual facilities, okay? Now, so far, the facility that they have open, right now they just have one, have been improving year over year. This is as of their most recent quarter. The sales have increased year over year 125%, to be fair, all these metrics are extremely small, so keep that in mind, only five million in revenue. Just, it, it's, it's microscopic, so they're just getting started, so the percentages look good, but just keep that in mind. Now the net price per pound has gone up 23% from better yields, more efficient markets, and then just better crops overall, all that good stuff going on. And now the yield per pound is up 82%, was 3.8 pounds and now it's 6.9 pounds. So they're getting more efficient now that that's been up and running for a while. And they're looking at building more facilities. You know how I said right now they only have one open as of now? Well, by the year of fiscal year 2022, by the time this is over, over the next six months or now, they will have four different facilities open. And this is some of what that looks like. Right now they have 9.1 million in 2021 fiscal year actuals. And then fiscal year 2022, they're going to do 24 to 32 million. Now that's going to go up significantly next year as these are up and running for the full year of 2023 and into 2024 we could probably start to see stuff like 100 million plus in revenue. Now if you want to see those farms and you want to see what they look like, Moorhead, Kentucky is what they have open right now. This is the one that they have open on the left here where my mouse is and I'm scrolling through the pictures and it has about 60 acres worth of tomato farms 
And then if you want to look at the next one, which is supposed to be 15 acres of salad greens, which is Berea, Kentucky. These are what this facility looks like. Richmond, Kentucky for 60 acres of tomatoes. You can see the pictures right here. And then Somerset, Kentucky for 30 acres of berries. Looks like these right here. And so this is what some of these facilities are gonna look like. Very big, very green, very efficient facilities that are hopefully going to mirror or even be better than the original Moorhead, Kentucky facility. Now, if you look, they plan on going further than that. Now, right now, they're currently getting the capital, they're getting the money, they're getting their financials in place to build more and more and more of these farms. Now, they're only in Kentucky right now, but they plan on expanding across the United States. You can see that throughout 2024, they plan on building nine different facilities for different types of crops in different areas, and we'll stay tuned to see how that goes because we still have a while till that happens, but right now, we're trying to get the other facilities up and running and most importantly, profitable so we can use that to build new facilities. Now, this company does have an interesting curveball, and that is that they did buy a robotics company. I know, you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow, did this company bought a robotics company? Well, yes, they did, it's true. They own a company called Root AI, which they did acquire for about $60 million, which we'll go over in a second. Now, if you wanna understand the basics of this, it's extremely simple. You see these robotic arms, essentially they take tens of thousands of pictures from all different types of fruits and vegetables, and they're able to determine what is ripe, what is ready to be picked, what needs to be discarded, what weeds need to be plucked, all just types of basic farming techniques. And you can see that from its little hand right here and the little red looking sticks, and above that right here is the little camera that it has, and it takes those pictures and is smart enough to recognize these things. Now, as you can see, this is the close up, once again, talking about the hand that it grasps onto and then the little camera, but they acquired this for about $60 million, $10 million in cash, and then $50 million from its remaining shares that it diluted. And Root AI also had 19 full-time employees that were researchers and, and robotics and engineers who were currently working on building out Root AI, which they are now working at with App Harvest, of course. Now, the fundamentals of this company are god-awful. I mean, it is just terrible. It is not good whatsoever. They're about a $300 million company, and throughout this year, they're gonna do about $20 million in revenue, so about 10% of that, if not less, okay? The free cash flow is awful. This currently is producing about negative 50 million or so, 60 million or so, and negative free cash flow every single quarter, and they are burning through that cash pile at just insane levels. At the beginning of 2021, they had 300 million in cash, and it's went down and down and down to today's 50 million in cash. They've almost burned through the entire cash pile. The good news is they do have lots of opportunity to raise debt, and they do have capital leases as well, which are very small, but their main nasty core debt currently sits at about 120 million. So comparing this to the cash pile, you can see how the cash is going down, the debt is going up. So you might be saying they have awful fundamentals. Well, Jordan, why are you interested? A couple reasons. The first one is, is that it's very rare that I get to invest in a company that is good for the human race. So many times when you invest in companies, it's at the sacrifice of humans, where profits are put over any type of human fundamentals or any other type of human right. This is a company that is a certified B Corporation, which means it's for the public benefit. They're very clean, they're very efficient, and if this were a company that were to become a $100 billion company one day and did billions upon billions of revenue, this would be a net benefit to society. So that's why I find it interesting. Another thing is that I think it's really interesting for the tech behind it, between its robotic farming and the overall model that they have. They're very efficient, they are very innovative in the fact that they are buying these robotics companies and they are so efficient and they're in prime locations. And I think they could be an acquisition target where a big farm or a big meat company or something of the sort could buy them for pennies on the dollar. And since they have the money and the capital to produce big profits one day off of this, it could be bought out. So the thing is, as an investment, it's not one that I'm interested in today. They're burning through lots and lots of money. I wanna see how these next four farms come into play. I wanna see if they're profitable, see if they're actually growing revenues, and see if they can get the losses under control. If this company were to go down massively, say to like a dollar a share, where they're a $100 million company, that's probably where I would start to get interested and just potentially do it as a 
super, super small risky play. Because as you can tell from my portfolio weighting, I have a third position that is very small, which is Crocs, which is more of a risky company. Most of my money, like 90% of it, 88% to be exact, is in core holdings that I think are long-term compounders. Salesforce is a conservative investment in my opinion. Amazon is a conservative investment in my opinion. And so I like to position my money that way. And if I were to buy a company like App Harvest, which is an extremely high risk bankruptcy potential company, I would want to buy it for just pennies on the dollar. And hopefully if they could get things turned around, it could explode in share price. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Like I said, if you haven't already, check out the stuff down below. Leave your comments down below as well. What you think about App Harvest? Is this a good or a bad investment? And let me know any other, other information I didn't include down below in the description. But thank you guys so much. I'll catch you guys next time.